Hello, my name is Ralph Becker. I'm the lecturer of Introductory Statistics, Econ 10062, and I will regularly publish little video clips like this one to um, supplement the lecture notes. And especially, I will do things that are sort of calculations, um, a bit more intense, where you have to really go through in detail. I publish these as videos because that will give you the chance to go through it by yourself at your own speed rather than having to follow. Uh, the speed I impose in the lecture. In the lectures I will then basically gloss over these uh, calculations or be extremely brief because I assume that you watch these videos. So the, in this video I will touch on two things. Firstly I will revise some issues on growth rates and indices which we talked about in the first lecture and I will go through some summary statistics and I'll expect that you watch this before you go to the lecture. I will always inform you what I expect you to watch when. So let's go first to growth rates. In the lecture we used examples of the uh, GDP, you know, UK GDP and I had some statistics. Actually we'll use the same example here. Here I have the table from the Office of National Statistics where we have uh, GDP, the particular measure. There are lots of measures. Uh, the particular measure here is the ABMI uh, measure. Uh, you can see here it's seasonally adjust, uh, adjusted. It uh, uses prices of a particular year, so it's a, a real growth series. Inflation is taken out. And um, all I want to do is I want to take a few of these values and do some growth rates and indice calculations. Can you find this file yourself on the website of the Office of National Statistics? Yes, you can. Is it difficult? You bet. Um, Simon Rogers from The Guardian described it as the world's worst web page and um, I, I can't say I think differently about it. But anyway, I've done the work. Let me just copy a few data uh, across. I'll just move this out of, uh, out of sight uh, for you. So we're having a GDP series here, GDP, and I will just have to um, do it like this, here we go, uh, GDP and in uh, particular we are looking at the ABMI, okay, and the few values I We'll copy here after 2008 quarter one. Now the value is three six seven five four nine. And then uh, quarter two in 2008. This is three six two eight six nine. Okay, so you can already see GDP shrunk here, but we know 2008 wasn't a good year really. Um, 355, 7, 5, 2, quarter 4, 3, 4, 7, 7, 3, 1, okay, and let's go up to here, quarter 1, 2009, three four two two eight three now of course we know so this is real that means inflation adjusted and seasonally adjusted so let's calculate growth rates okay so we'll calculate growth rates I should have left some more space here what we want to know is what, how has GDP evolved from quarter one to quarter two, for instance? Well, at the end, we look about an annual growth rate uh, as well. And so we can see here these two numbers that is uh, measured in billions of pounds. And what we see here is that GDP has shrunk. So we have, we certainly know we have from quarter one to quarter two, we have a, we have a negative growth rate. Now, what is it? How do we calculate it? 
it is basically the difference it is this value minus this value that will give us the difference and we'll say 362869 minus 367519 and then we want to to express this as a percentage difference basically as a percentage of this initial value okay of the value in quarters so one so we divide this by 367 Five one nine. So let's calculate what the uh, what we get. I'll just call up a calculator. So we have three six two eight six nine minus three six seven five one nine. So that is that one, and then we divide that by three six seven five one mm, three six seven. Um, to do five one nine. Okay, and so what we get is negative naught point o one three. Okay, so that is negative naught point o one three. So we can see here that okay, so this is the same as negative I'm using too much space here. Okay. So this is the same as negative 1.3%. Okay. You can see in one quarter GDP shrunk by 1.3%. It's quite a lot. Okay. And we were in the recession at that stage. So if we then want to calculate the growth for quarter three from quarter two, we do exactly the same. Okay, so we'll I'll try and write a little bit smaller, three five five seven five two minus the previous value three six two eight six nine divided by the previous value three six two eight six nine and uh, we'll just do the calculations again. Five five seven five two minus three six two eight six nine is that divided by three six two eight six nine. Okay, what we get is negative or point one nine six so that is negative 0 0.0196 and that's approximately equal to negative actually approximately negative 2% okay another shrinking economy and we can do this uh, we can go on with this so let's just do this more formally so we, we understand the the uh, general bit. Let's call. Let's say we have a series GDP, and now I give this a little time subscript t. Okay, and that little t basically represents the time periods here, or eight quarter one, quarter two, and so forth. Now, if we want to know the growth of GDP at time t, what did we just calculate? We took the GDP value at time t, we subtracted the GDP value of the previous period, and we call that t minus 1, that's the previous period, and then we divide it by the value of the previous period. Okay, so this calculation is exactly what we've done here. Okay, and, the, and what we get here is the growth rates. So what we calculated here is the um, quarterly growth rate. So um, I could just, for instance, uh, I could put this here. I could say quarterly growth rates. Now, if you want to have, if you have quarterly data, but you want an annual growth rate. So let me just use a different color here. <clears throat> so if you want an annual growth rate. growth 
right? Okay. What we now really want is you want to know how has, for instance, 2008 quarter one to 2009 quarter one. So if you want to calculate the annual growth rate, what we're basically after is want to know how the GDP at time T has developed compared to the GDP at time T minus four, four quarters prior. And then we divide that by the initial GDP, which in this case is that of four periods prior. Now, before I do that, I actually want to, uh, to complete the calculations of the monthly growth rate. So I want to calculate uh, two more monthly growth rate so let me just uh, quickly do that here we have three four seven seven three one minus three five five seven five two uh, is equal divided by three five five seven five two that is negative two uh, percent so here we get negative 0.0225 so that is about negative 2.3 percent and then lastly we go 342.283 minus 347.731 equals divided by Three four seven seven three one negative all point oh one negative all point oh one five seven that's rounded so that is about negative one point six percent. So let me now return to the uh, calculation of the annual growth rate. So let's just get the values here. The value, let's calculate the uh, growth, annual growth rate. Let's call it the annual growth of GDP at 09 quarter one. Okay, so what we need here is this value, the current GDP at that time, 283, minus the one four quarters prior, this is this one, 367519, and divided by the initial one, 367 five one nine and now we need to calculate what we get here so we have three four two two eight three minus three six seven five one nine equals the divided by three six seven five one nine and what we get is negative negative 0 0.0687 so that is about negative 6.9 percent so this is how much GDP has shrunk now compare this so this is an annual growth rate now if we just look what we calculated for the four quarterly growth rates in this period this is these growth rates which we got and now actually if you just add these two up you get uh, 1.3 plus 2 is 3.3 uh, and we have uh, 5.6 uh, 6.6 we get uh, 7.2 okay if you add that all up and see that's about the same order of magnitude as this one negative 6.9 so growth rates to get an annual growth rates it is about the same as the sum of the quarterly growth rates, but not exactly the same. Okay, so you can't just add up uh, quarterly growth, four quarterly growth rates to get an annual growth, uh, but approximately 
if you have smallish growth rates or smallish negative growth rates you get approximately the right result but not exactly the same. So this far as uh, far as growth rates are concerned. Now I want to, to say something about indices. Indices, because they are quite common. Often you can see time series as indices and uh, I want to just give myself the same uh, periods and 09 quarter 1 and I will copy the quarterly growth rate so we had negative 1.3 negative 1.3 percent so this was the growth uh, negative 2% so that was 1.3 then we had oops, uh, negative 2.3 and 1.6 negative 2.3% and negative 1.6% okay um, and 1 point what did I calculate 2.2 .2. Uh, of course, there is a, that negative 1.3 was the growth rate for quarter two. Uh, so uh, let me just move that. Let's see if I can uh, get that done. Put X and control V. So I'll just move that one down. Okay. So. Negative 1.3 was the growth rate for quarter two. So now if we have an index, basically what we are saying is instead of wanting to deal with big numbers like this, we want to deal with numbers which are which we are sort of more familiar. And in a way, these numbers, the actual numbers, don't mean a lot to us. What we are interested in is the growth rates. And it's a little bit difficult to immediately see the growth rates from these values unless you calculate them as you now know how to do it. If you form an index, what we say is we'll just give an arbitrary value to the series at one particular period. Let's say we give a value of 100 to the series at time quarter 1, 2008. And now for all following periods, we want to see how that series grows or not grows. Now, if we have a growth rate of negative 1.3 percent we immediately know what that what that value should be here okay it should be 98.7 okay because from quarter one to quarter two the series has shrunk by 1.3 percent and if we shrink 100 by 1.3 percent we get 98.7 how did we do that formally we formally calculated the index at quarter two was the value of the index in the previous period that was 100 times 1 plus the growth rate let's just call that G at time T okay so that was times 1 plus, but now the growth rate was negative, 1.3 percent. Okay, so to make that, to do that formally, we know that one point, negative 1.3 percent, that is just the same as negative 0 0.013. So if we calculate that, we get 1 minus 0.013 that is 0.987 and that times 100 is 98.7 okay so this is how we did this formally now this was easy to do because we started with 100 now what about the next point now from here from quarter 2 2008 the series shrinks by 2% for the next quarter so now it's not the answer is not so immediately obvious now we know it's 98.7 the previous value times 1 plus 
minus 2%. So this we have to do with the calculator. We get 1 plus minus 2%, that's 1 minus 0 0.02, that is 0 0.98, and that we multiply with 98.7 what we get is 96.726 96.726 96 so this is the new value of the index and we can continue on we'll, we'll do one more calculation from here to here from 3 to 4 economy shrank by 2.3 percent so we get the previous value 96.726 times 1 plus the growth rate, the growth rate is negative 2.3%. So we get the following 1 minus 0 0.023, that is 9.97 times 96.726, so we get 94.5. 94.5 or 1 and actually let's do let's complete the whole story let's get the next value 94.5 or 1 times 1 plus negative 1.6 percent and here we get this one plus 0 0.016 sorry it's minus one minus 0 0.016 times 94.501 so what we get is 92.999 93 approximately okay so we get 93 93.0 approximately. Now you can immediately see if you now compare quarter 1 2009 to quarter 1 2008, you compare 100 to 93, you can immediately see that's about a 7% uh, shrinkage and that is what we just calculated before 6.9%. So uh, the differences here will basically be rounding, uh, rounding errors. So in practice, what you will often see in publications is you will not see the original numbers, okay, the GDP numbers, uh, or the growth rates, but often what will be published is this index series, okay, because it is just somewhat easier to be interpreted, and we do that whenever we are really more interested in the growth rates rather than the actual uh, numbers. Okay, so that was uh, a little video on growth rates and indices and I will produce a different one for the summary statistics.